Hi, I'm Thiago Passos for SSW TV and today I'm here at Microsoft Ignite Australia in the beautiful Gold Coast. I've got Paul Batum here with me. He's an engineering manager on the Azure Functions team. Hi Paul, how's it going? Hey Thiago, good. Thanks for having me. Good. Um, so let's, let's start with the first question. What is Azure Functions? I think to me Azure Functions is all about making cloud programming easier. That's, that's what it boils down to. Uh, making it more accessible in terms of letting you just write code that responds to events, things that happen in the cloud. That might be events that are happening such as HTTP requests to a, mm -hmm. to a server or messages on a queue. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, uh, the idea is, is you write code that responds to that event, mm -hmm. do your business logic or whatever, mm -hmm. and the system will scale that code to whatever level necessary. If mm -hmm. there's a bunch of messages on that queue, we'll run your code on a bunch of instances and it'll process concurrently and you basically will keep up with your workloads. And I think that uh, you, if you start with this model of writing bits, little bits of code that respond to single events, you can then easily compose this into much larger systems. Uh, good cloud systems are typically lots of bits of separate, separate small bits of logic that are working to like, get to an eventually consistent state of some site. Mm -hmm. And so if you start small, write these bits of code, process your events, you can just build them up together into a, like, a, like a big solution if, if that's what you're... And then you come with the microservices concept. Is that yeah, right? no, absolutely. Like Azure Functions ha definitely lets you do microservices. You could mm -hmm. just say, hey, I have a few different functions. They're all in this function app. This function app is one thing that I deploy. That's basically a microservice. You can build an application by composing lots of function apps together and you're, you're basically following microservices patterns at that point. Cool. And what are the limitations of Azure Functions? So, I mean, there is definitely some, some workloads where Azure Functions is less well suited. So, uh, one example would be uh, if you're trying to do really memory intensive processing, mm -hmm. uh, when you're running on the consumption plan for Azure Functions, the, there's limits on basically how much memory you can allocate. It's about one and a half gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you've got a workload that's loading some massive data set into memory, or something like that, you're, you're not going to really want to run that on the Azure Functions consumption mm -hmm. plan. Um, I think that there's, there's other examples of limitations, like you know, when you're sending, you know, actually pushing traffic to an, a, to an Azure Function, you're generally doing that with HTTP. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to run, like, I don't know, a TCP server, mm -hmm. you couldn't really do that. Yep. You couldn't really do that on Azure Functions. Um, the one other thing that I would point out is the main programming model for Azure Functions is stateless. You have like an event that has occurred, you process that event. Mm -hmm. If you need to do some like really stateful work, um, maybe you're trying to do something like distributed actors or something like that, okay. maybe you should be using something like Azure Service Fabric to do All that, right. which has you know, got built-in support for that. Our, our programming model is much more stateless. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, and for people who are starting or, or, or wanting to start uh, developing for Azure Functions. Um, can, you give, give, can you give them some tips or, or where to find information to, to start? The, uh, the easiest place to start is to go to functions.azure.com. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big button on that page that says try it for free. And we have an experience where you can go into the Functions portal and start writing code for say a little snippet that handles HTTP requests mm -hmm. or something like that. And you can basically try it out it never asks you for an Azure subscription. You, you log in with your, your social credentials, Facebook, GitHub, Google, something like that. You just you log in with that and you get an opportunity to, to kick the tires with Azure Functions. Mm -hmm. And then sort of once you start sort of hitting the limits of that little sandbox environment, you want to do some more real work, real processing. You want to hook mm -hmm. your functions up to an event hub or uh, a storage account. You want to try out the blob triggers that we have so that you can write functions that respond to whenever files uploaded to blob storage, at that point you're going to want to grab an Azure subscription, you know, mm -hmm. either an Azure free trial or mm -hmm. a subscription that you have access to. Cool. And, and finally, what's coming next? Like, what's coming that people still don't know about it? What, the, what's the, what are the new functionalities of Azure Functions? So I guess like, I need to be a little bit careful about spilling all the beans, <laughs> but right. Azure Functions is open source. Mm -hmm. So if you were watching our GitHub repos, you'd already get a good sniff of mm -hmm. some of the stuff that's going on. 
Uh, one of the things that we're definitely focused on right now is we'd like to do much better integration with App Insights. App Insights is like you know, a great service for you collecting a whole bunch of telemetry, logs, metrics mm -hmm. for your application, either you know, client side or server side. And so we see like an obvious like point of integration here where all the times your functions are executing, all the logs they're generating, metrics on the latency, really, ideally you like check a checkbox and you say, mm -hmm. hey, my, my Azure function should be sending all its you know, data to this App Insights instance, and you just sort of put in your key, and, and then away you go. Like, right now, you can integrate functions with App Insights, but it's kind of manual. You get, mm -hmm. you get the, the SDK, you write all the events mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. it's not really out of the box. And what about the other way around? Can you, can you add, add some triggers to App Insights to, to, to start a function, to do uh, something? Hey, that's, I haven't thought about that one. Um, I guess it depends on whether or not App Insights has has any type of webhook support because mm -hmm. one of the places where functions is uh, is really useful for is if, for example, you need to integrate with some other system and they have webhooks. So mm -hmm. you're trying to write a little bot for Slack or you're trying to write some code that runs every time a pull request happens in GitHub. Mm -hmm. We have some some templates that help you like write webhooks in mm -hmm. functions. Um, I guess I'm, I don't actually know whether or not App Insights has any webhook support. If it does, that would that would be definitely a way to do it. Cool. And Azure Function is there, is ready, and you can you can already use in production. Yes, Azure Functions or, is already GA. It happened late late last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's GA'd with support for writing your functions in C sharp, F sharp, and JavaScript. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of other programming languages, but they're all in the in preview okay. right now. C sharp, right. F sharp, and JavaScript are the other other supported GA languages we have. Cool. Awesome. All right, Paul, thanks for, for, for coming here today, for spending some time with us. Yeah. And here I am. I'm Thiago Passos for SSW TV. Thanks for watching. Cheers.